everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tier Studio, and today I'm sharing with you how I decorated the covers of my gel print journal. There will be another video coming up uh, day after tomorrow that shows how I bound all of this together. I'm not; it's not complete yet, and so I don't have everything um, ready to go with that video yet. I haven't edited it completely. Um, I will be using a uh, I'm going to call it a, a macrame binding, maybe, although it's not really macrame, but anyway, the covers I decided to, I decided to make, first of all, instead of my original idea of I was going to fold all the pages in half and sew them into a, um, well, you've seen my other gel print journal before, and if you haven't, I'll do a flip through it, the other video. Um, of what I did before. This time it's going to be full eight and a half by 11 size pages. So I cut these corrugated cardboard pieces to nine by 11 and a half. So they're a half an inch all around bigger than the pages that are going to be in between these two covers. This is the front and the back cover. And then because it's made out of corrugated cardboard, I put some washi tape all the way around the edges to cover up those holes that um, would be on the edges. You know, if you're looking in there, you know what I'm talking about. There's corrugated paper in between these two pieces. Just that's the way it's constructed. But I didn't want to get fancy and go, you know, buy something or try to find something else. So these are just cut from a box that I had that I'd had something mailed to me in it and then after I put the washi tape all around then now I am um, collaging on different papers from all the gel prints that I did in March and April so I separated these papers into two piles based on color and pattern one pile has blacks and blues and then the other pile has more like turquoise and teal and blue so those are the papers that I'm planning on covering all this with. All the papers that I'm using are the ones that were printed on um, copy paper or printer paper, just, you know, plain text weight paper. Some of them are cleanup prints. Some of them are from my six by six plate that I used as kind of a, almost like a roll off palette as I was gel printing. And if you haven't watched those videos, there's a whole bunch of gel printing videos from March and April of this year. And that's where all these are from. So then all the inner pages that I'm going to bind into this book are printed on both sides of a either glossy or black cardstock. So in the next video, you'll see all the pages as I flip through and as I bind them in. Um, to the journal. So this isn't a very quick process. <laughs> the whole thing took a while. So I'm decorating both the insides and the outsides of these covers using, you know, just by this collage process. So I did one, one front, set that aside to kind of dry, it doesn't get completely dry. And then I'm working on the other one. And then I'll set this one aside to dry, work on the back of the other one and the, you know, like that. So the only one that I'm actually going to completely finish on this video is the very front cover. And then I do work a little bit on the back cover, but the inside, the two inside covers, I just leave collaged and I did not finish them, but I will as I'm working on the journal. So they will become parts of the pages on the inside of the journal. This particular one that I'm collaging on right now is actually started out as a magazine page that had a purple and green and teal succulent on it. <laughs> and then it's been gel printed over and as I was working with it, I was like, yeah, I really like this. So there's a little bit of it left and I'm going to use it on some other project at some point. Um, it's fun to look back on, on all the pages. So you might be wondering, why am I collaging them? Well, I can't just glue an eight and a half by 11 sheet on there and call it good because this piece of um, corrugated 
card cover stuff is nine by 11 and a half. So even, and you'll see me here and I think in the next, the next piece, I glue a full sheet on there. Um, but I do have to put these things in pieces. Plus it just makes it more interesting to have, you know, little different pieces and patterns to start out with. So this is one of the, what they called a transfer. I think, I don't know if they called it a transfer technique, but it's basically that technique where you use the glossy magazine to use, a, use it as a resist to make a print. And I just thought I'd glue her on there. I, I tore her out and glued her on there. And that will, that ends up being the inside of the front cover because I end up finishing the, the opposite side of this one as the front cover. I didn't know exactly what I was going to be doing as, as I did it. Also, I have a, <clears throat> I have punched holes in these, but then as I go in between, I don't show it, but um, as I, as I flip over after it's drying a little bit, I do re-punch the holes before I, I do the other side. So there's a full eight and a half by 11 sheet that's been printed. That was one from when I was doing printing with threads and string. And as you can see, it doesn't cover all the way to the edges. So that's why I need to do pieces and parts. I'm not trying to make it particularly complicated. I just wanna get these things covered so that I can finish binding the journal. So I'm just, purely working on color and pattern combinations. And as I'm gluing these, oh, by the way, I didn't tell you guys, I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. It's a heavier medium to do all this um, collaging. And I'm putting it both on the background and then also on the back of each piece of paper. And then I have a old, um, I think that's a hotel key card to kind of scrape down and make sure there aren't any bubbles. So that's the process. It's not difficult. This isn't difficult. It's just, just the kind of mindless putting together of different pieces of paper and different colors and patterns. And I mean, it's not completely mindless. I do, I am, I am intentionally doing it, but the process itself is just kind of once I've picked all the papers, then I just kind of look at it and I decide, oh, is this one go? Does that one go? This one is another one of those magazine transfer pieces that didn't turn out particularly well, but it still makes a cool pattern. So I'm still using it, even though it doesn't have like, it, the, the, the resist picture did not lift up on this one. So I'm filling in the corners and the edges with other papers that are similar, but not the same. And this is from the black and blue pile. And then on the other side is from the teals and blues pile. So I didn't think that I had enough of one set of papers to do all four ins, ins and outs. And I didn't figure that it mattered because it's all going to be seen as an individual piece. It doesn't work together at all. So this one is, I, is the one that I end up decorating as the front cover. And I start to do some paper piecing on there by cutting out these shapes and gluing them on out of different pieces. These are cactuses. I know you can't tell yet. <laughs> right now they look, well, weird. They look a little weird right now but they're going to turn into cactuses eventually. And this is a process. It's, um, you know, I cut out the shapes, I glue them on. I cut out other shapes, I glue them on. I decide that I need other shapes. And then I decide, I make other decisions that end up being a little bit weird and then Eventually it all comes together at the end. That's how it works. <laughs> I'm going to be using some, some acrylic paint and some pencils and things as we go along. So I've got uh, four cactuses. Obviously I need something else. Do I want to put more tall cactuses or do I do something else? I decide to put a prickly pear on there. 
So I have this piece of weird silver-ish paper. I'm cutting out the pieces, but you can't see them very well until after I do the next steps. And once I do, you can really see those, but right now they're kind of blending into the background. I was looking out my window as I did this, and so that's just kind of what came to me was the cactuses and shapes that are outside my studio window. My window overlooks the wash, which is a mostly dry creek bed that only has water in it during monsoon season in the summer. So there's a lot of different types of plants and cactuses and birds and animals out there that I can see as I'm working. So this, this is just the only section that I left in where I was re-punching everything because once you cover one side, then that covers the holes, but you can still see them on the other side. So then you can re-punch them so that you don't end up losing your holes that you're planning on using for binding. Because <laughs> I've already punched all the pages with the same holes and I have it all lined up. So this piece is from the Silhouettes Day of gel printing. I have a lot of, a whole bunch of gel prints of silhouettes. And I thought this one was kind of fun. These are bunnies that I cut out and um, it's cute. It's got the corrugated paper pattern on it and I found them cute so I decided to put them and this is going to end up being the back cover so and I do I do touch it up a little bit but not too I do, don't do a whole lot of work on the back I'll probably do more at some point but I need it I, I realized that this video was going to be ridiculously long if I didn't just hurry up <laughs> you know yeah I couldn't finish everything and still have it all fit in the video so here I am with my first um, bad decisions I wanted to I wanted to unify the background so I'm using some acrylic paint but my color choice is dumb. I was I was thinking about daytime and what I should have been thinking about if I really opened my eyes and looked at what I was working with I should have been thinking about nighttime and I ended up realizing that eventually but as I first started the colors I was putting on them were just too light. These are um, Dina Wakely is that right? Dina Wakely Diane Reilly. Yeah Dina Wakely. I get those two mixed up. They both start with a D that's why. <laughs> Um, it's her paints, so I think it's Sky and maybe the turquoise one, and then I also have some, of course, titanium white there. And I started, I started doing this thinking about blue sky and white clouds. So you can see why I made the color choices that I did to begin with, but then I end up eventually getting out the night colored paint which is an awesome color it's almost like a Payne's gray but a little bit bluer so it's just a real deep dark blue and it's it's a great color if, if you don't have that one I would recommend it it's a great color great color so there's the night and then once I put that on around my what ends up being the moon I, I was thinking it was the sun but it was blue so why did I think that I don't know I just wasn't thinking I was just worrying about I was traveling for the weekend and I wanted to you know work on this stuff and I was worried about what was I going to pack and what was I going to take and you know I just I was not thinking well and that happens often often so the lesson of that is that just keep working on it just keep trying until you get a better idea um, you can always put more paint on, you can always, you know, change your mind at any point in art, you can change your mind. You don't, nothing is set in stone. You're not carving marble here, so you'll figure it out. <laughs> that one section right there in the right hand side, it did not want to accept paint. It was, it had some sort of shiny something on it, some metallic -y thing, and it ended up, the pattern ended up really staying there. Also, to, to maintain the patterns that I have, which I want to keep, 
I was blotting all through that process and I even um, sprayed some water and blotted with my kitchen towel, kitchen roll, I guess they're called or whatever you want to call it, paper towel. That's actually a shop towel if you really want to get technical. So then I got out my ink tints pencils. These are the ones that um, once you activate them with water, they become permanent. They become a permanent ink. But until you uh, get that water on there, they, they're water soluble. So I get out the, the blue indigo one, which is dark blue, almost the color of that night paint, and um, start adding some shadows to define my shapes around my cactuses and around my my moon and um, this really helps to bring those main images to the front to the for to the forefront of what you're looking at so it defines the shapes separates them from the background but also helps to integrate because you're you're adding those shadows in there and then I get out a uh, green um, I can't remember which green that was to start to start really putting features into my cactuses. These would be saguaro cactuses that have not yet grown any arms on them. Uh, saguaro cactuses start out as a little bulb, then it grows into a column, and then as they get to be, you know, around 100, I mean, these things last forever. They're tall. They're really, I think, they're, they are what, what I would consider a tree. They're, they're tall, and they're big, and they're massive. Um, but they start out as a little bulb on the ground, and it just takes them years and years and years to grow. We've been living in this house for 16 years, and we have a saguaro in the front that has grown to be about four feet tall in 16 years. And that's with it be, being given nutrients and water from our watering system. So... That tells you how long it takes and why they're protected because you know you don't you don't just pull one out they, they take hundreds of years to grow to what they are so when when people do construction or companies do construction around here they have to preserve those saguaros and um, replant them so or sell them to to nurseries for someone to plant so once all my uh, detailing and and shading work was done that I'm taking a white Posca pin and creating the spikes. All the plants here in the desert have spikes. Everything, even the flowers. <laughs> you have to be cautious all the time of everything that you touch when you're gardening, gardening because you can get spikes in your fingers. But the cactuses don't really look like cactuses until you put those on there. I mean, you, they kind of have the shape, but it really makes a big difference to put on those those little clusters of spikes and on the saguaros they have these these um ribs that that go vertically on them and on each uh, each rib comes out and then and then everything goes in out in out and the spikes are right along the edge of those ridges that come out so that's where i'm putting them and then on the prickly pear the spikes are in little clusters pretty regularly regularly spaced all over the plant all over the pads of the plant. So now I have out a stencil girl stencil. This one is called Ancient Marks, I think. And I'm using some of the Ancient Marks just to add interest to my background using a blend of that sky paint and a little bit of titanium white. And I'm not putting it all over. I'm just putting it like here and there and not super regular, just kind of randomly. But I think that adds a lot to it. I just, I like that pattern. I think it's a cool pattern. It reminds me of ancient ruins that I've seen in Mexico that have been restored, have a lot of those shapes on them. Then I'm defining my moon shape a little bit more using that indigo pencil and some water, adding a little bit of a shadow. This stencil is from um, Strumpet Stencils, Wonder Strumpet uh, on Etsy. And it's a moon phase crop circle type thing. And, and it's circular. So I start, start out with the indigo pencil and I put it through the stencil. And then I blend all that out with 
my Arteza water brush, water tank brush, and then I go back over it again with white, and it gives like a white pattern with a blue shadow around it. I decided I didn't like that, so then I come back in with pure white titanium white paint. That's one of the 4x4 four four stencils. It's one of the smallest stencils I have. Then, then because that was so nice and round, I realized that my moon is not exactly round. So I have to touch that up with my pencil a little bit. <laughs> and um, I, I draw in a few stars. I did splatter with some white paint to make stars, but then I draw in some actual um, star-shaped, you know, five-point type of a star with my Posca pen, just a few, and just to give it more of the idea of being nighttime. And then I add this word, balance, from another one of the strumpet stencils that I have that has balancing rocks on it. And then I decide to work on the back cover a little bit, and I'm just putting some paint on there to kind of blend the edges of where I've glued on the um, silhouette, bunny silhouette piece. And that's the same paint I was using before, so it kind of helps bring everything together. Then I go back and add some shading with that indigo pencil again around the word balance and also around the stars. And I'm pretty much done. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you haven't already. And of course, it would be really great if you would share this video on your Pinterest or your Facebook so that other people can find me. That's it for me. Bye-bye.